Well, that's not good for your heart, that I can tell you. It's not good for your heart. He's not a bad sized fish either, I don't think. We'll get him up. Oh, he's a nice fish. He's buffed that cod walker straight off. First cast into the timber. You know he's ready there, Glenn? Yeah, mate, I am. Here he comes. Just got him in the corner of the mouth. Oh, yeah, good netting, man. <laughs> oh. Here he comes. Yeah, mate, he's playing up. He's playing up. So you actually got to get the fisherman to actually bring the fish to the net. Now, you're correct, you're correct. He can't keep his head up. Got him. <laughs> he's nice and fresh. That's a nice fish off the top. That on the beautiful. cool bunk cod walker. What a ripper. He's getting up towards the meat of that fish. I reckon he wouldn't be far off the money, would he? Look at that. Just tell you what, he's not, he wouldn't be too much short of a meter. And just get a hold of him. Have a look at that. See the little cool bunk cod walker there, surface lure? He's just smashed that off the top. I hear the wedding bells going in the background. I reckon Glenn's beloved is uh, <laughs> looking, to have a, looking, to have a, looking to have a yarn with him because we're in the wilderness here and he hasn't spoken with her for a couple of days. But that is a very nice cod off the top. I'd say not much short of the metre. High 90s at least. So we'll get him down on here. We'll get that lure out. We'll get him back in the drink. Oh, I said beautiful cod. Off the top in the morning on the cod walker, cool among cod walker. Fantastic lure and fantastic fish. So we'll let this big bloke go. Off you go, big fella. Look at that. Oh, that's the way to start the day, isn't it? Mate, congratulations. Uh, awesome. Fantastic fish. Now that is pretty special cod fishing. I love surface fishing. It's beautiful. There's Mate. nothing that gets any better. No. Oh, well, there's a few things. <laughs> we won't talk about them on a fishing show. <laughs> right, uh, we'll go and get another one, mate.
a bad fish or even going by that strike. <laughs> Beautiful mate. He's a bit better fish here. Yeah, he's a bit better. Oh, look at this good meat fish. He's a good fish. This is the first one that's taken drag. There's a fair bit of body down there. Don't let him get you. It's all right. It's hard to get good net, man. All <laughs> blokes that will steer the fish to it. <sighs> Very good surface fish, mate. Mate, that is beautiful. <laughs> now, that is my best surface cod at the moment. <laughs> well, we'll see if we can't better that, but that's a bloody ripping fish. What a magnificent fish, hey? It's, it's daylight. It's we're probably, I reckon, 10 o'clock in the morning. And we've managed to pull that fella off the surface. Now that... Is a damn good surface cod in anyone's books. Definitely, uh, definitely. A PB for you, Glenn. Definitely. Uh, we'll give him a quick measure in a second, but I reckon he's going to make a metre, no worries. So, and then we'll get him back in the drink. But uh, a good start to the morning. A great start to the morning. Oh, shit, yeah. <laughs> shit, yeah. yeah. I like it on top. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh Rodney. <laughs> Look at this hand. Mate, it's a trophy. I know. It's I know. Trophy. Have a look at his face. It'll be really sad. <laughs> and we've got tissue. <laughs> ah, that's fantastic. Awesome. Couldn't ask for anything better. Let's go and get some more. A swivel on each blade so every blade spins. I really wish I could tear a hole in your fence. <laughs> I have heard you of it that way, mate. Now I know you just got to fish off there, which is the perfect casting point. Yeah. But a lot of times casting across the very end branches of the snag yeah. will turn up very good fish. They sit right out in the middle on the tips of the branches, and the trick is to get your lure down to them. And let's have a go. We'll have a go. See what we can do. So the worst thing with these 4 by 4s is how you're trying to get down to these branches. It's because they catch so much water, you've got to make sure you slow everything down to keep them at their depth. Well, I had no trouble getting down to the branches. I got down there so well, I got stuck down. But that's the sort of thing I was talking about. In branch way up in the river, quite often cod sitting on them. And quite often very good fish. Yep, oh, that's a better one. Yeah, you got him. Coming down past the boat. Look at this. On them in branches oh. again. Oh I dropped him. <laughs> I seen the strike. That one hit you a bit harder? Yeah, yeah, he did. That was good. But see, once once again, right on the end branches, right out where we said there would be a fish. He's uh, he's pushed your arms out of shape a little bit there. Yeah, but that's okay. And see how they come to the boat? Yeah, flat that's, out. That's unreal. They all do it. They all do it. There you go. Off the end of the snag again, mate. Not very big, though. Okay, 
put the stick on him. Cross the end of that log again, Glen, eh? Yeah. The end of the snag, what we were talking about earlier. We did that yesterday and dropped a nice one off the end of the snag. Yeah, we didn't drop the fellas today. He had two or three cracks at that, did he? Just a couple of days. Kept coming. Here he comes. He's yeah. you no know, monster, but he's a nice fish. What have you? Yeah. I'll just, I'll just tip. Because it's a little bit warm. Because it's a little bit warm. We're in the middle of the day now. I'll just tip a little bit of water on here to cool carpet there. Josh, just before um, we go any further, just have a look at the size of the net and the way that that fellow's sitting up in the net. This is a really good um, example of actually having the right sort of equipment to do the stuff that you're doing. That's it. A small fish will fit in a big net. But a big fish won't fit in a small net. It's, it's really important to remember that. Um, you can never have a net that's too big when you're out on the water. It gives the fish, as Glenn said, it gives it comfort. It's sitting up there, not a problem. It's got water going through its gills and everything. Um, yeah, and you're not trying to wriggle it into something that's not going to fit into. So anyway, we'll pull him aboard and we'll okay, get this. Mate. We'll give you a look at him and then we'll pull this uh, 4x4 out. Awesome lure, the 4x4, mate. Mate, I am so impressed with it. Um, it's just, yeah, it's just worked out absolutely fantastic. It actually took a spinnerbait that I was um, never really happy with to actually making it something that we can fish with confidence and it's just proven itself it's actually working extremely well and that's something I've seen with you guys over the years it's always innovation 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 if you're not happy it's not good enough no it's, it's the de next definitely not the next step the next step the next step but anyway not me come he's no monster but he's a fairly solid little fish you want to put your rod down Glenn, and hold him up for the camera get a grip on him so, nice, there we go. Nice solid little Murray cod. Nice little fish. Four by four. You got him on the. I think you got, got, him, on the, got him on the main hook, Rob. I think you got him on both hooks. <laughs> Have we? Yeah. So if you can hold that, and just poke his nose around towards me, I'll see if I can um, pull him hooks out for you. No, you just got him on the main hook that time. Did we? That's good then. There we go. Look at that. Popped out of there pretty easy. Just work it through there. Nice Beautiful. fish. He'd be pushing mid seventies, I reckon. Not 70 pound, 70 centimetres, 75 centimetres or so I reckon, but nice cod. Anyway, give him a go, Glenn. Fish. Here we go. Come on. Oh. Beautiful. And again, fish and water the snag. So just something to remember. Well done, well done mate. Well done. Thanks, thanks mate. Well done. You ready for it? Yeah, mate. Bring him in. Nice one. Nice one. Now that one hit him on the drop. So just as he was falling down, you just felt a little tick. Pretty, pretty easy to see. It took it on the drop too. Yeah. By where the spinner bait is. Have a look here. Just pull that rag off my head, will you? Thanks, mate. As Glenn said, it's just took it on the drop, and what that means is when it's sinking down, the fish comes up underneath it and buffs it, and as you can see, that's exactly what it's done. Down the back of the throat. Most hookups on the drop, um, you know, mo most of them strikes you connect to, don't you? Yeah, definitely. Beautiful fish. Um, just one of the things, when they are falling on the drop, it's, it is handy to have your reeling gear, so when they do strike, you can actually strike back at them pretty quick. Okay, well, get this lure. You want to lift that net in, Glenn, so that's something damp to lay him on. And uh, just lay it down. There you go. Uh, 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 uh. That's Rod's cod hand you're about to get there. I've got enough cod for That's where these things are very good. Bolt cutters. I can just cut the end off that hook. Thread it back around through it, and it's fallen out there and that way we don't have to do any damage to the fish. Yeah. 
beautiful. Well done, mate, again. Fucking awesome. You just keep killing them on this four by four, man. Mate, I can't believe how Great well. <laughs> well, well, actually, I will. There is a new colour I want to try, but uh, yeah, might just change it. Well, it's got no stinger hook on it. I've cut the, the barb yeah. off the stinger hook, so that's okay. Anyway, let's keep going. Just one first, will we? So you see no whole fish. I just seen the big boil. But in front he was going up into the snag. So his back comes out of the water like a carp. He was just gorgeous. Ah, you got a laugh, godfish in there. This is sacred men's business. Shh. Hold it. It's really good to know that in really remote places, it's keep quiet, it's a bit of stealth, helps your fishing so much more, it's not funny. on the timber. Don't go there. Here he is. <laughs> oh, that is quite good as shit, man. That's awesome. Mate, is there anything on the back of my legs? <laughs> I'm not touching it. <laughs> uh, that is not good for your heart. That is not good for your heart. Or your pop of out, I can tell you. <laughs> She's doing these, she's doing these, I can tell ya. Oh man, what a beautiful cod. Uh, I reckon he's pushing a metre too, mate. Oh mate, it's just beautiful. Oh, fantastic fish, let's get him up here. We, uh, we actually sighted this one up high up in this snag as we were coming up this up the creek and he was just sitting there so yeah we knew he was there and we didn't think we were going to get him though did we that, no. that was the last little cast yeah i was of... just thinking when you went across there you I, was giggling. Giggling. <laughs> I was giggling i was just gonna go this is gonna go off <laughs> uh, well get him in oh he's a beautiful fish oh, he's nice oh, 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 oh. well if he's not a meter i'd say something's going on anyway have a look at that for a cod off the top that is an absolute cracker you got to be happy with that. Big, big gob. 
nothing that swims in this river is pretty much safe. We have noticed that the ducks don't even land on the water, and I can understand why. Oh, that's Imagine awesome. that sneaking up behind you, boom, yeah. you're off the top. That is fantastic. Anyway, we'll, uh, we'll try get this get lure it. out. Call them cod walker again, it seems to do the job. Let's see if we can get that out of there, Glenn. We'll get him back. I'm pretty happy about that. He's ready to go, mate. These angry fish, I can tell you. Oh, look at that. I'll tell you what, big boy, you go back out there and eat some ducks, eh? <laughs> well, there's a lot of reasons I like cod fishing. One of them's the wilderness. Another one's some of the idiots you get to fish with. <laughs> but most of all, it's them fish. They are absolutely amazing. And fish like that off the top, well, they're a dream, aren't they, really? Oh, mate, that's just... just that's what everyone wants. Yeah, that is fantastic. Oh, no, let's go and get a bigger one. I don't know, but I, th I feel like a bigger one. Oh, <laughs> mate, that is unreal. <sighs> Here's to the new treble. How crap's this rain, mate? Yeah, mate, it's like all things fishing related. <coughs> Sooner or later you hit a snag and we've hit one with the weather. Yeah, uh, bugger. We've had some really good action, some 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 really superb surface action. And uh, it's come in wet. We've had a day and a half of rain which has kept us off the water. But it's given us a chance to go through and re-rig a bit of tackle and have a bit of look at some of the stuff we've been using. Yeah, um, so why don't you show some of the people some of the surface lures the and that we've been using. Well, that's it. The surface lures we've been using, we've, uh, we've caught most of our fish in the last few days on the uh, Coolbunk Codwalker. This is a 100mm model. Um, it's got a nice popping action. Mm -hmm. You know, it looks like a, a lizard or a small bird or something popping across the top. And this is, the Murray Cod will come up from under their log and strike these things. Um, it's pretty special fishing. Mm. Yeah. Oh mate, it's exciting. I, yeah. I'm hooked. <laughs> I'm hooked. So are the cod, mate. Yeah. And like, there's a lot of variants of these sort of lures. Like, yeah. um, we got a couple here from uh, Mud Eye Lures. Yeah. Like this large timber model. That is definitely a big sucker. Uh, a Muldoon's Wee Willy Popper. These yeah. are very good lures. Good action. Broken back. Yeah. Um, so they make a little bit of a clicker noise. And then we go on to the weight baits. These have a different the different action. They sort of well, this one's obviously like a giant snake, and it, yeah. as it swims across the water, it takes on a snake-like appearance. It's sort of a probably wouldn't be bad for this bit of a creek we're on now because we, how many goannas have we seen racing across the creek? Yeah, we've seen quite a few swim oh. across, and I'd imagine that every now and again the smaller end of them goannas would get boofed. They might even have a crack at a big one, so you might. <laughs> You might find, find a few <laughs> short tailed goannas up this way. But or, a, or a couple of cod with a big scar across their face. <laughs> but at the end of the day, while that looks really large, yeah. it, it, in all, all seriousness, a Murray cod will belt that off the top. It's just yeah. it's something that most anglers probably aren't used to. Um, and we find that with a lot of our lures. Size is what tempts the fish more often than not. Yeah. And then we have a buzz bait. This is sort of a... Your trailer hangs down a little bit in the water. Very yeah. good hook-up rate on these guys because of that. The blade spins across the top, makes a gurgling noise, and this with a with a paddle tail fish on the back of it uh, has a little enticing action just under the water about that much. So uh, very effective lure. So we'll leave the surface lures. That's what we've caught yeah. most of our fish on the last few days. There's heaps and heaps of different models out there, uh, but very exciting way to catch Murray cod. Then we'll move on to some hard bodies. Um, I've got a few of the new Gilly Stump Jumper colours. We have been smashing the fish on these the last few weeks. Uh, stump jumpers have been around since... Oh, Adam was a boy. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. So probably one of the first real serious cod lures. Um, they've stood the test of time because they are a very effective lure. Um, so they've come out with a new colour range. This, this particular colour here has been absolutely dynamite. A bit of chartreuse and silver. 
Um, they have a good hookup, right? Most of the fish we've been getting have been on the cast. Um, we've, yeah, also, we've also come up... That's been pretty spectacular. We've given this needle nose a try. It's uh, It probably wasn't designed with Murray Cod in mind. It's probably more of a, a barramundi style lure. And what we've done, it had three trebles, a bit smaller trebles. And the, the first fish we actually hooked on it was a real big boy and he uh, straightened a couple of the trebles. So we've replaced them with our own owners, a couple of sets of owner trebles. We dropped the middle set off. It hasn't made any difference to the action. Um, and the hookup rate is absolutely superb. And I, I think that's probably because it's a narrow bodied lure. So when they come up behind it and suck it, it goes straight in. So a lot of the fish we've been hooking have been right in the mouth. Would you recommend that as more of a casting lure? Yes. Yeah. I'm, yeah I would be more inclined to cast this. It's got a it's got a little bit wider action. Yeah. Not as tight as the stump jumpers. Yeah. Uh, but it gets down a little bit quicker than the stump jumpers. So yeah, it's it's good, a really good, good casting lure. lure. Really yeah. good casting lure. And uh, and then you got the good old faithful. Yeah, the cooler bung codzillas. Like in the last four or five years, we've probably caught more cod on these lures than all other lures put together. And in saying that, we use them a fair bit, but we use them a fair bit because they work really well. Yeah. So uh, this is the sort of stuff we're casting and trolling for our cod in these smaller rivers. Uh, yeah. Once we get into the larger rivers, we're sort of upsized to, we use some of these lures, but then we go upside to some really big lures. Now, uh, Glenn, obviously, is the maker of Bassman Spinner Baits. Uh, Glenn and Sue have been doing this for, I don't know, how many years, mate? I've had Bassman for 12 years now. Uh, we took it over from Ron and Robin, who uh, Ron was the original owner and starter up of Bassman, which was, um, I think it started back in the mid-80s. Yeah, well... So it's been around a long time. They have stood the test of time. Yeah. And the reason they've stood the test of time, because Glenn is very passionate about what he does, and Sue's, um, and Glenn is a fisherman, and I, this, this is what I really like the most. Glenn is a fisherman that knows how to use his product, and any shortfalls, anything where he thinks, I can improve this lure, I can make yeah. it bigger, stronger, this will work, that won't work, he knows how to do that. And that's... that's oh, well, we're always learning, mate. Yeah, well, that's yeah, it. Everyone, if you, you think you know everything, it comes around to bite you on the ass because nobody knows everything. No, you don't. You learn every time you're on the water. I Definitely. learned that you need to keep your trousers tucked into your socks when you're surface fishing <laughs> because the action can be pretty close and pretty hard. Uh, definitely. Definitely. But, uh, yeah, we have a couple more lures here, the new 4x4. Yeah, the, this has been working really well for me on this trip because I wanted to really fish it, work it out, and that sort of thing. The old 4x4 actually had the smaller blade just on the clivis around the front, and... It just wouldn't spin. It was something that annoyed me so much it wasn't funny. So I had to do something to fix it up. Um, I come up with the idea of putting it on a um, on a swivel, and then put it on the clivers, and then everything is just swimming. Yeah. It was... As soon as I put it in the water, it just it looks awesome. Yeah, you got lots of flash. You got lots of water movement. Yeah. Um, it's not a deep water lure. It's it's more your uh, say three to four meters. Yeah. It looks, it's nothing new with the, the four-bladed, but it's just an improvement on the old design that actually works. Yeah, I've been smashing the fish on these, and I yeah. love them. They uh, they ride the timber well, which you can imagine. They've got like a yeah. canopy. Like, like the blades act like a canopy that sort of holds it up. So they ride over the timber very well. The hook-up rate's are superb because you, you, your arms are either side of your hooks. So You've got a lot of exposure over the back. Yeah, yeah. So they, they hook up really well. Now, this really excites me, the next one we go to. This guy here, we know there's been coloured blades for spinner baits and there's many little variants of it, but never have I seen anyone do this. This sort of stuff is absolutely superb in dirty water. You can imagine these, these fluoro orange blades all whistling about. Um, I can see this lure further under the water than I can see any of these other colours. Um, I really think these are going to be a great dirty water lure. Yeah, mate, and that's what we were trying to get to. Like, coloured blades have been around. A little bit ticked with me with um, one of the young fellas we sponsor is in the US, and he was chasing me for orange blades to fish dirty water over there. And I'm just going, hang on a second, we've got to do something about this hit back home here. It's got to work. So what we're trying to do now is make sure these will work, and try and tell people where and when they're going to be able to work. Instead of it just being another feature on the wall in the tackle shop for people to buy and they just throw it around for 10 minutes, catch nothing on it, 
but they're using it in the wrong circumstances. That's it. And I mean, I've caught a few fish on these over the last couple of weeks. Um, in some of the holes where it's a little bit dirtier, um, where you've got a fair bit of carp action where they're stirring up the mud and stuff, um, you see different clarities yeah. as you go along the river. And some yeah. of these holes that have got a lot of carp in them, um, they've stirred the water up a bit. And these seem to be a lot more effective than your, your golds and silvers. Yeah. Uh, once again, very good hookup, right? Because your hooks are clear of, of your arms and stuff. So I think you're going to see these in your tackle shops um, soon. There'll be three or four colours, Glenn? Yeah, it's a, a couple of colours. You know, you don't need to go too far with it. A lot of it, keep it simple so and it works. Um, we're going to do them in a few colours. Uh, also, one in that, which has been working, which I got <coughs> smashed on yesterday. Watch that fan or I'll be looking like an absolute <laughs> idiot. Um, was the one with the black blades. Black blades are nothing new either. Um, they've been out and around, but it's just when places get a bit of fishing pressure or mm. clear water, um, it just holds a bit better, bigger presentation. Yeah, no, it's a change. It's something different. And, and, yeah. and, and believe it or not, Murray Cod are not just stupid fish. They do learn. I've seen places where red hot bites and red hot catches, you, each time you revisit the same location, especially small water, your catches are less and less and less. Yeah. Unless you change something. If they've seen it before, they know it, they will refuse it. That's where you need to change something. We've uh, a couple of these holes where we've been boofed on the surface by cod. We can't get them on hard bodies. We can't get them on a spinner boat. But they had not seen a surface lure before. Yeah. Dan, just mix them up. And are straight on it. So uh, it's, you've always got to be thinking when you're out fishing. It's not just tie this on, throw it out, wind it in. It's why do I tie this on? Where will I present this, and, and, and how does this work? Yeah. You've got to think about it. And exactly. That, that's, that's cod fishing. You've got to think about it. Yeah, mate. And just show people the outfits we've been using. Yeah. And, and the lines. And yeah. That. It's a pretty basic outfit. We use it everywhere we fish for cod. Um, you don't hunt bear with an air rifle, so you don't hunt cod undergunned. We use 50-pound braid. We could use 30 but 50 is nearly double as strong. The diameter size is not much different. Yeah. And you've nearly got twice the breaking strain. So why wouldn't you use 50? Give yourself every chance because that next cast can be that giant fish. We use 50 pound braid, 60 pound leader. Yeah, we could use 40. But once again, why leave lures in fish? Why get pulled to bits? And we still get dusted on this. Yeah, definitely. So you always fish prepared for the biggest fish that's living in that, any river. So... 50 and 60. Um, we don't use any snaps. All of our connections are knots. Uh, knots are less likely to let you down than a five cent snap. And I've got a little saying with that. You can buy a, a $250 reel, <coughs> $120 rod, 40 bucks worth of braid, tie a $20 lure on the end of it and connect the whole system together with a five cent snap. And to me, that's just really weird. It doesn't make sense. So uh, this rod here is one of the Cod Raiders by Shimano. Um, it's a 6 to 12 kilo. I think I've caught more than 30 cod over a metre on this now. Um, it's a good rod. It's got extra handle length. It's got good size runners to punch that 60-pound uh, leader through. And most importantly, it's affordable. Um, there's a lot of rods on the market out there that are five, six hundred dollars And, they're, you know, if you can afford that, it's great. But these, these rods retail at under 150 bucks. So that's not a bad price. Gives you a chance to have a couple of outfits, one set up with a hard body, spinner bait, surface lure. And that's it. And, and I've got it covered. I've put a lot of hurt on this rod. I'm certainly not soft on the fish. I like to uh, get them heads turned. I can go down for that <laughs> one. So they're a good rod for the price. For the money, fantastic outfit. Um, the Cronarch, well, what can you say about the Cronarch? It's, uh, they just, they just keep getting better and better. They've been around for yorks and... Um, they stood the test of time. Yeah, they cast like a bullet. They've got a beautiful smooth drag. They hold heaps of line. Um, at the end of the day, it's, they're just a great reel. You sort of you, you can't say too much more about it. So that's our outfit. It's just, yeah, it's a pretty straightforward outfit. Yeah, um, plain and simple. Built for cod. Built for cod and that's it. Mm. And you can take the same thing into the Northern Territory. Yeah. And fish yeah. for barramundi, which... There's not a lot of difference between the two fish, I don't think. They they hunt similar. Yeah. They fight similar except for the jumping and uh, yeah. So the one outfit could serve us, you know, both both species. So uh, excellent, mate. Hope this bloody rain stops. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> well, if it doesn't stop, mate, we can have a couple of cans of beer and a bit of a barbie. And, uh, we wake up in the morning yeah. with a couple of Panadol and away we go. Away we'll go again. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so we, I hope that's helped you a bit. Um, you know, a lot of people don't know what sort of tackle to buy and aren't sure what sort of rod and reel. Um, you know, that's what we use and it works for us, so I can't see why it won't work for you. Yeah, there's a bit of depth there. It's a shame this water's sort of coloured up a bit, isn't it? It has, mate. A bit of rain and a lot of carp. We've seen a lot of carp along the bank in the, oh. sh in the shallows just stirring, stirring the mud up. I was surprised at the amount of carp that are racing around. We haven't seen them in sort of the last day or two, and then up around here is um, yeah, there's been that, a few. They're in that shallow water, I think they're in that because it's a little bit safer from Sorks. Away from the cod. But, um, I wish they'd get into some of these holes so the big fellas could clean them up. But uh, we've gone to bright fluoro colours in this dirty water. Uh, it seems to work really well. I'm running an orange stump jumper. And Glenn's dredged a little bit deeper with a with an orange four x four. Mm. Pretty, uh, pretty, very, very pretty little lure. Pretty bright, isn't it? Yeah, and it stands out in the water. You can see it down quite a bit further than uh, standard spinner baits and all lures. We might have to give young Jogo a fish soon. Yeah. He's swinging on the camera. I don't think he's too happy about it. When can I fish, Dad? <laughs> when can I fish? So. I think you're going to let him fish when he washes up, cooks tea, <laughs> makes our beds. Gets us a stubby. Yes. Then he might be able to do it, I reckon. And it's not, oh, look at this. Orange 4x4. Orange 4x4. Grab that net at its feet, Glenn. Yep. I will. Just just everyone just stay steady. The water's a little bit dirty. Just let him now just lead him to it to the net if you can. Keep his head up. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah. Jocko, mate. Oh, yeah. Absolutely fantastic. Thanks, brother. Have a look at this everyone. Orange 4x4. Now this is what we've done this for. We made it for a water clarity that's a real, it, it's starting to get a little bit khaki here where we are. And this is what we made it for. As you can see what Glenn was saying before, when we had our little tackle talk about these, these new fluoro sort of coloured blades and skirts and everything matched together for the dirty water. And uh, we're in a bit of dirty water today. We've had some rain, you'll also notice we're in a different boat. It's only because we couldn't get our boat in and we had to hook everything up to the punt. Yeah. So it's made the, it's made the water a bit dirty, but as you can see, this has done the job, no probs. Uh, young Jock's hooked this beautiful fish, and um, on the new Bassman 4x4, what would you call that? Fluoro orange, mate. Yeah, we could probably go Jaffa. Jaffa. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful fish. You'd be in the 90s, I reckon. Yeah. So pretty fish. I'll get Jock to give this one a kiss, and we'll put him back. Yeah. I'll just get this lure out though, because we want to use it again. Pretty happy at the moment. Actually, this will be my first cod for the season on the Bassman. <laughs> All right, come on, fella. Let's pop you back. All right. Go for it, man. What a beautiful fish. Beautiful. Well done, Jocko. Thanks, man. That is a cracker. That is a cracker. Beautiful. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Remember I was telling you that story? Oh, must have flicked a little stick. Oh. Oh. Wonderful.
the flick of a little stick. Is he? He's a god. Oh, he's not a bad one either. No, he's not a monster. I told you there was a little flick there, didn't I? There we go, look at that. Oh, he's a good fish. <laughs> oh, he's a beautiful fish on the needle nose. On the, what do they call this uh, colour? Guns and Roses. I'll just lead him back around here, mate. On the Guns and Roses needle nose. Eh? Great barra colour. Oh, sorry, mate. Beautiful fish. And there we are. I've got a little bucket of fingers here. You get all these bits and pieces out. That's a good fish. That's a real good fish to start with. It? He's got to be. Jeez, because he woofed it down and now it's come out. I felt that little tick, right? it's just a little bang. Like that, and I thought, oh, that might have been a. Yeah, you said bang. that right at the start. Yeah, he just, he just followed it up, grabbed a hold of it. I'll get myself a bit of cod thumb here. I'll have a look at that for a Murray cod. I've just uh, brought good mate Dean Norbiardo out for the day. Dean loves his native fish the same as I do. And we just, uh, I think it's about the second snag, mate. Yeah, that's about your fourth cast on that lure, so the <laughs> colour's good. Yeah, the colour works. Guns and Roses in the needle nose. Um, another one of the Gillies lures. Seems to be working an absolute treat in these waters. Great on the cast. I haven't done much trolling with it, but uh, I think it'll work on the troll also. Um, I'll get Dean to get this lure out and we'll put this nice fish back. But he's a bloody beauty. Good start. Straight up like that, like second, I think is the first snag. Yeah, it was. The first snag. <laughs> you just tilt his tail back a bit, that the other way. That's it. And then tilt, flick the tail on. It's a good shot with this guy. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> a big smile. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. Ripper. We'll put this fish back. That's a great start. First snag, third or fourth cast on the needle nose. Um, we're running a combination of hard bodies and spinner baits, so we're fishing two different water layers. Dean's running the spinnerbait at the moment. Uh, unfortunately for Dean, this fish was sitting a bit higher. But I'm sure he will taste a few fish before the day is out. So I'll put him back. Look at that. Magnificent fish. Big head on him. Yeah. Big head. Good head. Oh, you're gonna, I'm going to lose some bark here. I can see this coming. Let him freshen up a bit. There you go. Magnificent start. Great start, Dino, eh? Good on you, mate. Yeah, well that's, done. That's, that's fantastic. Beautiful, great start, Rod. <laughs> Righto, brother. Some of the hazards of fishing. Yeah. Got a few, few fishing hazards here. A couple of really bloated dead goats. Dino has to drag the boat past him. <laughs> oh, wait, mate, can you get any closer and can you go any slower? Oh. <laughs> oh, we out of here. Oh. That's not the right one. <laughs> oh. 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 oh, it's in my bath. Oh. Oh. Look at that, double. Go. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely got me hooked on something. Oh. And he knows it too. He knows it too. Now yeah, I've got to get him back to this snag and I've got him get back under it. That'll be the hard bit. He's just come up to the snag now. Be the hard bit. This is why you use 50 pound line. This is why I use 50 pound line, mate. We're on the snag now. Oh, he's a good fish, but he's got me. He's still there. This is where you want to be able to see under the water, isn't it? How does that snag lay? And he gets up to there and that's as far as you'll come. He's still there. There we go. He's off. He is a very good fish, this. <laughs> Got big wide head Far sharks. Far out. <laughs> yeah, and he's going yeah. off. He's big. I want to see this. Yeah, he's real big. I want to see this fish because he is a cracker. He does not want to come to the top. I don't think I've ever had a cod fight like this. 
does not want to come to the top. We're doing some weird stuff. Just putting these little short ones in. I'm gonna get a look at him, Dean. Oh dear. He was he was a monster. He was an absolute monster. I just he's doing these really funny little head shapes. Put him in the tail? Maybe I have. Maybe I have, maybe they're not yeah, here. Yeah, I've him in the tail. Hooked him in the tail. No wonder he feels so. <laughs> well, there you go. Wow. Anyone can hook a fish in the mouth. It takes real skill to hook him in the tail. Oh, uh, dear. <laughs> Still a solid fish. It'll be fun to Oh, well, yeah, it'd be a good way of fish, I reckon, but I've got him in the tail. That's rubbish. That's why take you a... couldn't get him up. What do you say? Take him. Yeah, I wonder why the fight was so different. Oh. Anyway. He's a big fish, that's why. Yeah. Big fish in the tail. You done that before, Rod? Put one in the tail? Never. <laughs> Never. This is a first. I have, I have heard of it. This is an absolute first. They Easy. call this a, a cod's tail. <laughs> it's pretty hard to net, don't yeah. it? Lucky I'm good at it. <laughs> I'll try and get him. I don't want to put too much pressure no, on him. I don't want to go water. back first. I want to kind of. No, go ahead first, mate. Come around this end. I'll try and keep, once we've got that tail out of the water, he can't swim, see? That's it. You won't get that lure there, mate. Oh, or will you? He's too big. <laughs> He's in. Isn't he? Good to get under there, right? Let me get this fish in here. Whew. Yeah! <laughs> On the stubby, in the tail, that's crap, isn't it? <laughs> Go good for that. And in a snag, that was the unluckiest fish in Australia, I reckon. <laughs> now we muffed it with the net. Look at that. Stumpies can catch them anyway. By the time, check out the tail on that. Look at that. Oh, and that's why it was giving me such curry. Hey? Hooked in the tail. Could not be worse. I just can't believe that. Crap at bending those hooks. Okay, he's have all the tools ready. Well, there you go, he's off now. Look at that, on one of the new Gillies stump jumper colours. I think there's five to six new colours in the range. And we've been smashing the cod on them. And, like I said, they even catch him in the tail. <laughs> you know it's a good lure. <laughs> no, he's a real good fish. Yeah. He's a big 120. We'll lift him in. Can you lift him, Dave? Oh, yeah. yeah he's a, look at that. Have a look at that for a Murray cod. That is a big... Righto. Check that out. That's the one on the stumpy. Hooked in the tail, horse of a cod. Absolute horse. We'll get him back. We'll get him back. My God, he's heavy. Whew. Look at that big boy. This is what it's about. This is what it's about. Giant cod like that. What a fantastic fish. Look at him. I don't know how old that fish is, but it certainly deserves to live. With the new laws that we've got in place now, there's going to be a lot more big fish like this in the river. So, I reckon he's nearly right to go. Off you go, mate. Well, what a magnificent cod that was. Might have been hooked in the tail, but when you're on a good lure, anything's possible. Uh, stump jumpers have been around, I reckon, more than 20 years. They're a reliable lure, they keep catching fish every season and Gillies has just released the new colour range as you can see by the fish we just got then um, they still work very well. I've got four of the five new colours uh, if you haven't given these a go I recommend that you get out and get a few of these in your tackle box because they work really well. Even catch them in the tail. Even catch them in the tail don't I? <laughs> Mate I'll take them however I get them. Listen to that drag. <laughs> tell you what, these fish are hot to trot at the moment. They are. They're not monsters, but it's not a fish. Hey, I'll have a look at this DT. B, uh, no, no. <laughs> four by four. It's like a DT, but it's twice as good. Yeah. Oh, he's a pretty fish. It won't get too exciting. We just had a follow, right. and we dropped another one, and then onto this one. 
There's a few of them sneaking about to the shore. To you, mate. Hmm? Just giving it to you. Yeah, it just seems they go from being hard body fish to spinnerbait fish and you've got to keep agile and changing and that's why it's good rod to have your rod like you say rigged up one with the spinnerbait one with the hard body and yeah it gives you a bit of an each way bet mate. Yeah it depends what the environment's like you yeah. know. He's not going to give up. Yeah he's a bloody good fish. Oh, You're just hoping the bigger one's going to come up and eat it, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> That's it, you got him now. Keep that head up. Beautiful. Beautiful. Another nice fish, mate. I'll tell you what, I think you're never going to have to give me that 4x4 uh, four four, because I'm getting a little bit of an, what would you call it, an arse pasting at the minute. Well, you did, you did give me the stink, so... <laughs> I did, give it back. <laughs> well, that's a good fish. He's bigger than you think. Oh, yeah. Nice and solid. <laughs> On that orange 4x4 four four again. It's all tangled up in the... Managed to get all tangled up in the net. Handy tool, this pair of bolt cutters, for when things get really tangled up and had it. It's not hard to re-rig a, um, a spinnerbait. It's only put another stinger on the on the end of it. There you go. That's a nice fish and that's why it gives you a bit of curry mate. Yeah that's a better fish. It's a I'll nice be, fish. Oh yeah I might get a photo of you with that. Yeah beauty. Righto, now you think that I cut that hook off because it was tangled in the net. I actually cut it off there, mate, because I don't want you to use that anymore. <laughs> well, I should have known was cut the line off the short over the side. Oops. No, it's working very well, isn't it? It's yeah. not going to now. No, because the have tail's that. gone and the, and, and the hook's gone, but we'll re rig that. That won't take you long. And... Yeah, I just like the 4x4s. Four it just takes a little bit longer to sink and hang in their face. Absolutely deadly in these rivers that are a little bit shallower than, you know, usual. Very productive, mate. Yeah. Bass man's on a good thing there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good fish, dude. Good fish, dude. Oh yeah, he's a cracker. Yeah, we'll get him. You like this one, he just pins up, don't you mate? He's a cracker of a cod. I reckon he should be the one that smashed us last, and I'll let you know. Get his head up. Get him right. Right, drop your rod tip. Oh, holy smoke, buddy. That is a snarl fish. Thanks, Rod. <laughs> Have a oh. look at this. On the needle nose again. We just can't put a foot wrong with these lures. What do you think of that, mate, eh? Yes. <laughs> a kiss? <laughs> I don't get too many kisses in the boat, especially when I've got this frog head on. Oh, <laughs> but that's a, that is a ripper. That's you want to get him in, mate? I don't know if I can. <laughs> absolutely shaking the bits. Oh, that's cool. an easier PB right there. Yeah, he's a good fish. Oh, <laughs> Rod, look at that. <laughs> that's, that's your 120. That's a big fish. That's, that's a big fish. I'll just power us out into the sun here. Oh. Look at this. A kiss, eh? <laughs> oh, look at that, that's what they do to you. That is exactly what they do to you. These big fish. They get into your veins and then they just... They that's just what it's about, mate, Send you going. Check that, that out. Check that out. Oh, right I tell you what, Dean, I reckon you could really give yourself a tattoo with that. <laughs> Let's get this big bloke out and have yeah. a look at him. Oh, hang on to him. That's it. Get your hand, front hand hand. Oh! oh. <laughs> He has just smacked me in the face. <laughs> well, I just got beat up by a cod. <laughs> That's the boy. Have a bit of a talk about him, yeah. And that was that. And that was that. So that was a new PB. That was giving it about 120. I reckon it was every bit. It was the biggest, heaviest thing that I've ever held. Still got the shakes in the glove. But it goes to show when you put a plan together, we ran through this whole section. We surfaced lures, didn't get a bump, didn't get a touch. Got to the end of the run, 
Rod put on a spinner bait. He knocked one fourth, fourth cast. Yeah, about fourth cast. On the bassman, the new bassman. Come back up. We got one touch, and then got to this snag where Rod got his ass handed to him a bit last night. So we knew that there was a fish there, big boy. And it was. And it was first cast in. Rattled it down. Bump, tick here, there, and then full lock, double thumb. Got it out of the timber, and yeah, that was it. New PB. <laughs> good Thanks, stuff. Rod. And good stuff. Right, let's go and have some breakfast. Oh yeah, nothing like a bit of a workout of all brekkie. <laughs> I was double thumbing that <laughs> thing, just yeah. That, that's how you have to do it though. Well, they change your pace, put a mumbler on. Hey, hey. Well, he's not a monster. He's a nice little fish though. He yeah, doesn't eat the rest We just cast these snags over here on the way downstream, and not half an hour we've had a barbecue lunch. We've come back, and we've come back past them. And so far we've cast three different snags that we'd already cast and we've had three strikes. So a little rest and it seems the fish have come on. Beautiful bird. Beautiful. Not a big fish, but a nice fish. On the Bassman Mumbler, right in the corner of the gob, look at that. I like to fish my mumblers with hollow belly plastics, it gives them a little bit more lift, makes them a little bit easier to run through the snags, and uh, the fish seem to like them too, look at that. I sometimes dip the tail in uh, garlic, uh, it's called a spike or something, and, and it colours the tail, and what you get there is a little red hot spot flashing along behind the lure, so works pretty good. But uh, he's probably one of the smaller fish we've got, Dean. Yeah, he is definitely, he'd be the smallest and he's still... 70 plus centimetres. Yeah, beautiful little fish. Well, anyway, we'll eat this one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm dead serious. <laughs> no, we'll put him back. We'll put him back. But if we wanted to eat this one, we could. <laughs> so, back you go. Magnificent. Stink. I'm getting worn out, brother. You brought the stink. Nah, don't you. Yeah, yeah, I'll give it. I'll give it here. Thanks, there mate. Thanks. <laughs> Next car. Next car. Bang oh. on. Heading for the centre of the river, anyway. Oh, nice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, mate. Not like to be happy with that fish. I see a little bit of big cod snobbery sliding. Idiot. Idiot. I think it's going to be still. Oh, he's a little bit bigger than the last couple. Ch chunky little fish. And playing up. Well done, mate. So we haven't pulled a fish that, that long yet. Oh, yeah. He woofed that. Look at that. That's good on the spinner bait, that hit, mate. Good ears. Oh, he's alright. Yeah, chunky. Look at that. Straight down the back of the neck. Bassman 4x4. Four four. Right. Yeah, can do. Beautiful cod. A fantastic looking creature, aren't they? Let's see what he does. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Watch him. He's chomping down on the thumb. Mate, that lure is working really well for you. It started off fantastic this morning yeah. with a monster. But by geez, you've gone down hill since then. Yeah, I'll tell you what, <laughs> just downsizing. You have to be upsizing, not downsizing. Ah, the beauty, beauty about that is it just rides the timber so well. It doesn't dig its face in. It kind of hits the timber and skits across, and they just come up and, yeah, they like and them, wolf it. They? they do love it. But you will notice we've changed the hook system. They come from the shop with three smaller hooks on them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, probably better for barrow, I don't really know, but we've upsized our trebles. Probably got a, a 2 two o on the front, or a 3 o and a 1 o on the back. Why do, you, um, why do you put a bigger one at the front? I find, I tend to find most, most of the hookups, you'll find this hook buried in the corner of the mouth. And I, I think it's because of an implosion feeder, when they suck it in, spins the lure around and it goes in. Yeah. And it seems to hook up in the corner of the mouth. And that's generally the one that's got hold of the fish the best. Although yeah. today we've noticed a couple of... Just been hooked on that, in the back by the skin of the tooth. Yeah, but when they're really on, this hook here seems to do the damage. It's it's nearly always smack in the corner of the mouth. Big hook, plenty of plenty to grab a hold of, mm. you know. So 
And the reason you don't keep three hooks on this? Well, uh, they just catch you, don't on really, each other. you don't really need it. No, I'll just catch on each other. Two hook system working pretty well. We missed a few, yeah. but we've caught most. Beauty. So. I've got a grub in me nose. <laughs> Look at that. When you look at me, you pulled that out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was a bit sinusy. <laughs> <laughs> hey Jock, have a good look at a good reel. <laughs> Go in the drink. You want to f***ing hold on to that camera. Uh, I've been God. trying to save you all day, but get <laughs> right, you can do it. You're your father's son. I am. Oh yeah, no, I oh. you again tonight. <laughs> See why we push your dad in the water? Yeah. Well, I'm fishing with you. You're such a jumpy bugger. <laughs> Mate, that's the tallest I've ever seen you. <laughs> sorry, mate. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. I'll give you sorry. Yeah. Good fishing. Good fishing. For the win. <laughs>